Welcome to the third of 13 SPSS video tutorials accompanying the first edition of the text Introduction to Statistics for Social Sciences. In this tutorial, we will be using IBM SPSS Statistics version 19. Keep in mind that if you are running a different version of the software, there may be slight differences between them. However, in most cases, the differences are usually quite minimal. In this tutorial, we will discuss three topics covered in Chapter 3 of the text. Specifically, we will look at how to use SPSS to obtain measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, and measures of shape. To follow along with this tutorial, open the file Chapter 3 Video Tutorial Data .sav. This dataset consists of 30 respondents and 4 variables named age, repeat, violent, and days. If you look at the properties of the variables, you will notice that labels have been applied to each variable. Age represents the age of the respondent, repeat indicates whether the respondent is a repeat offender, Violent represents an ordinal measure of how violent the crime was, and days is the number of days the respondent served in prison. For the ordinal variable violent, a value of 1 indicates that the crime was nonviolent, 2 is mildly violent, 3 is moderately violent, and 4 indicates that the crime was highly violent. Finally, under the measure column, you will see that the measurement properties have been defined for each variable. Since SPSS provides measures of central tendency, dispersion, and shape within the same menus, we'll need to deal with all of them together. There are basically two ways to obtain all three. The first is through the Descriptives window, which we get to by selecting Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Descriptives. Once the window is displayed, we place our variable of interest in the Variables box, and then select Options. One limitation with using the Descriptives option is that it only provides the mean and not the median or the mode. However, it does provide us with several measures of dispersion, such as Standard Deviation, Variance, and the Range. At this point, we will skip the Kurtosis and Skewness measures and select Continue and then select OK. In the output window, we are given a table labeled Descriptive Statistics. The first row of the table provides the results for the variable age. In the first column, we can see that we have a sample of 30. Next, the range of age is provided. This is obtained by subtracting the minimum value from the maximum value. The mean age of all 30 respondents is given, and finally, we have the standard deviation and variance. The second way to obtain the measures of central tendency, dispersion, and shape is through the Frequencies option. To do this, we select Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Frequencies. Once the Frequency window is open, we select the variable of interest and then press the Statistics option button. The Frequency Statistics window basically consists of three areas of options. The options for measures of central tendency, the options for measures of dispersion, and the options for measures of shape. For this example, we will select Mean, Median, and Mode, the Standard Deviation, Variance, Range, and the minimum and maximum value. Then for percentile values, we'll select quartiles, as well as request the 20th, 40th, 60th, and 80th percentiles. To do this, we enter each desired percentile value as a whole number, and then press the Add button.
Finally, for the measures of shape, we'll select both the skewness and kurtosis options. Once we are done, we press continue and then OK. The first table in the output window provides us with the information that we requested. By default, SPSS provides us with sample size information. It's a good idea to check this value when it's provided in order to ensure that your analysis has included the appropriate sample. For measures of central tendency, we now have the mean, median, and mode. If your data contains multiple modes, you will see a superscript note as shown here. Looking at the bottom of the table, we can see that SPSS is telling us that only the smallest value of the mode is shown in this table. For measures of dispersion, we are provided with the standard deviation, the variance, the range, and the minimum and maximum value. In addition, we now have the percentile values. You may recall that we asked for the quartiles as well as the 20th, 40th, 60th, and 80th percentile. In this table, SPSS has simply combined those results in numeric order. For measures of shape, we also have the values for the amount of skewness and kurtosis in the variable. The positive value for skewness indicates that the data is positively skewed. This indicates that a large portion of the participants are younger. This being the case, the median should be lower than the mean. A quick comparison of the mean and the median shows that indeed this is the case. Finally, a negative kurtosis value indicates that the shape of the data is platycurtic rather than normal or leptocurtic. This brings us to the end of the SPSS video tutorial for Chapter 3. We hope that you have found this tutorial to be useful. In the next tutorial, we will focus on how to recode variables within SPSS you will find that this topic does not correspond to the material covered in Chapter 4. That's because Chapter 4 primarily contains information you will need for Chapters 8 through 13. Therefore, the tutorial for Chapter 4 is meant to provide you with an understanding of other useful features in SPSS.